Hi, it's Stephen here for Bland Designs, and today what I thought I'd do is i show you how I make my poured acrylic um, pieces. I've been talking about these a lot and showing them to you on my vlogs, so I thought today I would show you how I go about doing it. Now, there are lots of videos on YouTube that show you this process. That's how I learned it. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a really small piece, and I'm going to use this as my canvas, and you can see this is only about a four by six uh, canvas board. Um, as simple as that. I have a tray laid down here with some deli paper on it. Um, the deli paper is just to keep the mess to a minimum so I can clean it all up easy enough and I put it on the tray because there's a lot of dripping. This is very messy as you're going to see. And the equipment I'm going to use is I usually use bigger cups than this but I'm using these little cups and I have four of them right here. And um, I'm going to be using, I decided to try, and this is a bit of an experiment, maybe this should be a crap video, I'm not sure, as opposed to a process video, but I'm going to try the Distress Paints by Tim Holtz and see what happens with these. Now, these are an acrylic paint, um, so they should work the same as any other acrylic paint. Um, also, I'm going to add to them some pouring medium. And this is what I add all the time. It just makes the paint a little bit runnier. And I'm going to use a little bit of water. And I'm going to use a little bit of silicone oil. Um, the silicone oil will help create um, cells. And you've heard me talk about cells in my vlogs before. So this is both a process video and also a bit of a crap video. So we'll see what happens. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take one of our little or take our little cups and we're going to pour some colors into each one of these. Now, I'm going to, um, I'm using broken china, antique linen, wilted violet, and fossilized amber. So we'll see what we're going to get here. The first stage of this is to put some paint in each one of these cups. And so that's what I'm going to do. Might be a good way to use up some of these paints too because I've had these laying around for quite some time and uh, to be honest I don't use them so this might be a way to use them if I can get it to come out of the bottle Ooh, you can tell I haven't used this one in a while because it's coming out really clumpy now there's a ball in them and I'm shaking it up here you can hear the ball inside Ooh. I'm not having a lot of luck with this one. Well, it's probably enough paint, but let's see what's in here. Oh yeah, it's all gone kind of clumpy. Ooh. Okay. So I guess if you don't use them on a regular basis, they do sort of dry up in the bottle. Um, so that was the wilted violet. Let's get some of the fossilized amber. And the last one is antique linen. Now I'm using the antique linen as my white base. I often use a white base. Um, I could have used picket fence, but I'm not so sure about picket fence. Picket fence has different properties than the other paints, so antique linen is an off-white, so that'll work. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a little bit of pouring medium into each one of these don't need a lot. This will make more paint than I really need. And then before we add anything else, we've got to give everything a good stir. And you really want to mix the pouring medium in very thoroughly. Oops, I'm just splattered it onto my canvas. Okay. Usually I wear gloves for this, but today I'm playing dangerously here that I do have my apron on. So you can see I'm mixing that up in there. And I'll do the same thing over here. So this is kind of boring and tedious and this takes a little bit of time to make sure everything is thoroughly mixed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue mixing these up and I'm going to add my water and silicone. And uh, once I have those all mixed up, I'm going to come back and show you how to do the pour. 
Okay, so now I have my paint mixed up and uh, I just add a little bit of uh, water to each one of these, mix that up, um, and there's already the pouring medium in here, and then I added a little bit of the silicon oil as well. Now the whole point of the silicon oil is so it'll create these cells, and you don't need very much of it. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these colors and I'm going to pour them into an empty cup. And I may have to do this as a double pour because these cups are very small. Um, usually I do it in a much bigger cup. So first I'm going to put in my white. And it really doesn't matter. Um, doesn't really matter uh, what order you put these in. Some of the yellow. A little bit of the white, uh, what do they call this, wilted violet. That one I'm a little worried about because it's coming out a little bit chunky. And a little bit of the broken china. And I'm going to make a second batch of this. In fact, the second batch of it, I'm going to pour in a different order. I'm going to put in some of the purple. And then I'll do a little bit of the yellow and a little bit of the white. And I do a little bit of the blue. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm doing this off camera. Okay, so I've got my two pores here. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the first one. This one has the most in it, so maybe I'll try this one and see what happens. And I'm just going to take it and I'm going to turn it, I'm going to put it on this board, I'm going to turn it upside down. So let's sit there for a second. I've got it on top of another larger cup so that things can drip down the side. That's the, that's the reason for the tray. And boom. Ooh, it's moving around. Not so sure I'm liking what the purple is doing. So I'm going to just move it a bit. I shouldn't have used that purple. But we'll see. So you just move it around, you let it drip off the side, and get some of that. See, the purple all came up chunky and this was not what I wanted this to do because obviously that purple there's an issue with it so I think this one I'm pretty much wrecked but now what I'm going to do is another kind of pour with this what the heck, we'll see what this is. Told you this may turn into a crap video as, as opposed to a, uh, a process. And I'm getting some canvas po poking up here and I don't want that either. You want this to be fairly thick. So I'm just gonna do this kind of pour. Now that's looking a little better. Just getting it all over the sides on here. Now I'm going to take the stick. I'm going to see what I can do with this purple. I'm just going to see if I can pull it through. Now I'm combining a couple of techniques in doing this. Um, a dirty pour is what I did at the very beginning. It's a dirty pour because you're just putting the paints on top of each other. You don't mix them up um, once you've put them into the one cup. And then I did a sort of a freestyle pour where I just poured it all over and uh, from the cup. And that was also a form of dirty pour. And now what I'm doing is I'm sort of drawing the paint out. And I'm trying to get it to sort of move things around. I don't know how I'm doing this. I've got some mud happening here, and I've got these stupid little blotches. You know, I'm going to leave them though, just to see what it's like when it dries. 
with it because it might add a little texture. And now I've still got some paint remaining over in the cup. So I'm going to see if I can lighten this up a little bit by just pouring some of the white in two spots. It's kind of neat what it does. You can see this is kind of a messy process. And maybe I'll add a little bit more of the blue. And just to drop more of the yellow right on the blue. And once again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one of my sticks and I'm just going to sort of draw it through. And this is where the creativity really comes in. You're, you, you are painting, in a sense. And so you can see I am altering And I'm just seeing what this is going to do as I draw through the paint. It's kind of fun. I'm a little disappointed in the purple stuff there because it's gone cloppy. But you know, it's texture, so I'm not going to worry about that. But normally, when you use these kind of paints, uh, you want them to be very fluid. And that one was not. So I'm just still, until I get it the way I want it, now what I can do is I can take it and I can tilt it a little bit. You see, it's very runny. And I still think I need a little bit more of the white. So I'm just going to put a couple of drops and I'm just going to drag them through. here. Just knocking off a few of those little purple clumps. Now if you're doing this on a large canvas you'd have the sides and so you would want to make sure it drips down the sides so you can finish off the sides. On this one I'm not that concerned about that. Yeah, I'm picking out the little pieces here. I'll leave a few of them though because it's kind of interesting texture. And I think I'm just going to add a little more white down here. Now you can tell that this is very, very soupy. And that's okay. It will take a day for it to dry thoroughly, and then afterwards you'll want to varnish it to protect it. And don't be surprised as, as it sits and it dries, the paint will continue to move a little bit. Okay, that's kind of interesting. This is not exactly, it's my color choices, they're kind of dark. Now, I have a secret device here, and let's hope I don't start a fire. I've got a blowtorch. Now, the idea of the blowtorch is that I added some silicone oil to each one of these little pieces of paint, or bottles of paint. And they are flammable, so you don't want to use too much. I made the mistake once of doing that, and it went up in smoke. Um, but the idea here is to bring the air bubbles in silicone to the surface to create some cells. Now, I really don't have any cells in this right now. 
And again, I find that hit and miss. So let's see what happens. Ooh, I'm getting cells. See them? Too hot there. You don't want to have it sitting on one spot for too long. Okay. I think that's enough. Okay. So I'm not sure if I should play around with this anymore. Still a lot of paint on it. It's tilted a bit. Maybe too much paint. I don't know. Hmm. Okay. All right, that changed the whole thing completely. All right, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna set this one aside and I'm gonna try another one with some different colors and I'm gonna stay away from that purple. Uh, as well, because this didn't really. Well, let me torch it once more, see what happens. Bit of a fire bug. Mm, got a few cells, but not that much. Now I'm also wondering, maybe using. The distressed paints isn't such a great idea. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up here and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do another mini pour, but I'm going to do it with regular acrylic paint that I usually use. We'll see what happens. Okay, so this time I mixed up four colors of paint again uh, a couple of shades of blue, an orange, and a white, and I'm using um, the paint that comes from Michael's Artist Loft brand. Um, which is also an inexpensive paint. You don't need to use really expensive paints with this technique. You can if you wish, but you know, you can. I've seen people do it with house paint. I've got them all mixed up. There's some water in each of these. There's some pouring medium and a couple of drops of the silicone oil. And now I'm going to take one cup and I'm going to pour a little bit in each one of these cups. I'm going to pour a fair amount of white because last time I don't think I had enough white. Then I'll do a little orange. The amount you put in each one is really up to you. Um, the more of one color you have, that will be your more dominant color. Okay, and remember you don't stir this up. So I've got a new canvas board right here. Turn it upside down. I'm just gonna let it sit for a second so that the paint comes down from the bottom and I'm going to lift it straight up and see what we get this time. Okay, we got a lot of white happening here, so I'm just going to move it. Now, I'm going to stop at this point because I have a lot of white here, so I'm just going to add a little blue in this segment, the two blues, and I'm just going to continue sort of moving it around. Now I'm not getting quite as much movement as I got before. This is kind of interesting over here. I do get some little tiny cells coming up, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up another pour. Sorry, I'm going off screen here. Okay, and 
and I'm just going to freehand pour this. I think I need a little orange over here, so I'm just going to freehand that. Maybe a little bit of this lighter blue over here. darker one down here. And now I'm just going to, don't even know if I have to tilt it, but I think I will. I could have made the paint probably a little runnier. like what's happening here now. This is much better than the first one. So really, distress paints, probably there's too much water in the distress paints already. Maybe if I didn't add any water to it, just the pouring medium, maybe they'd work better. And now, do I let this sit here or do I take, I'm just going to pull some of the paint through. These are pretty bold colors. And maybe go this way. And let's not do such straight lines. Let's do some wavy lines. I'm just playing now. I'm kind of liking how this is turning out though. Okay, I'm going to stop. This is one of those things too, you never know where to stop, but I'm going to stop now. Now I am going to torch it again, just to see what I'll get. Um, I'm not that hopeful with the torching, but we'll see. That didn't really give me any cells, but you know, I'm really liking the way this looks. Here, I'll, I can't, I'll try to pick it up so you can get a little closer to look. Now, that's a lot better than the first one I did. So, I don't know if it was the paint that I was using, the type of paint, or what, but that's what a poured piece looks like. And they're one of a kind. Actually, this one I really like. So, as I said, what happens now is it has to sit and it has to dry. There will be some drippage still coming from here. It'll still shape. If you want, you can just take a stick and go around the edges a little bit. And just put some paint on the edges as well. And also eliminates a bit of the dripping. But the drippings won't hurt. What I often do is after an hour or so, I'll go underneath it with the stick, just if there's any drips that are coming down from the side. So, I think that's pretty nice. That turned out pretty good, that second one. And so that's how you do an acrylic pour. 
It's all experimentation. It's a lot of fun to do. It is messy, but as you can see, I have a tray and everything here, so that helps catch the drips and it's easier to clean up uh, that way. Do you need silicone oil? No, you don't. You can just use water. Do you need pouring medium? You can do it with just water. The idea is to make your pin paint thin enough so that it will pour. But when you add other things to it, you can get some neat effects. Do you need to torch it? No. Again, that's up to you. Now I am getting, you can't see it on camera, but I am getting a few little cells in here. But again, I'm not getting that many, but that's okay. That doesn't bother me. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this uh, how-to process, making a little mini acrylic pouring piece, and I hope you'll give it a try as well. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.